Hello there. I'm Kirk Harnack, Executive Director of Sales and Marketing for Telos, Omnia, and Axia. My background is engineering and being on the air, so I feel pretty well suited to do this job. Um, I've been working with Telos since the year 2000, and before that I ran a successful um, broadcast engineering contract, uh, contract engineering company. I'm going to talk to you today for hopefully about 10 minutes or so, we'll try not to go over 10 minutes, uh, about Axia IP Audio, what it is, and a little tiny bit about how it works, and we're going to do some real good show and tell here to show you other broadcasters that are using it and how they've configured uh, their studios. Uh, as I said, I work for Telos and Omni and Axia, all part of the Telos Alliance, as is our sister company, Linear Acoustic. What do our companies do? Well, there's Omnia that does audio processing for AM, FM, uh, HD radio, uh, internet streaming, and multicast uh, applications. Uh, we do broadcast consoles. That's our Axia division, audio routing, intercoms, and audio logging. And you're probably familiar with our uh, Telos division. Telos does telephony and codecs, single-line phone hybrids, multi-line phone systems, Zephyr IP and ISDN codecs, and streaming audio. Now, you've probably heard almost everything we do. I want to introduce you to uh, Michael Catfish Dosh. He's a friend of mine, and he's the CEO of the company. Michael is a very intuitive guy. He used to work for PR&E and design consoles for, for them. Now he's uh, doing the same thing with us and our CEO. Mike asks, what if? A singularly great question because it, it opens the door to so many other questions and ideas. Let me show you some studios now from around the world. You know, there's over 2,200 Axia IP audio consoles on the air or in production around the world right now. Here are a few of them. In Nashville, Tennessee, that's where I live, by the way, Nashville, at MTV Networks, there's a CMT, Country Music Television, a CMT Radio Live. That's Cody Allen there. Uh, he loves his Axia console, feeds a bunch of stations every day with his show. There's the Dave Ramsey studio. You know, Dave Ramsey does this financial advice program. Uh, it's syndicated to over 500 radio stations every day. They all, all that audio goes through the uh, the Axia IP audio console, and they use Telos phones to take calls from callers. Lots of calls every hour where Dave gives financial advice. You know, we have uh, a lot of consoles in Russia. There's Retro FM in Moscow. The Motor Racing Network, Voice of NASCAR, they're in Daytona Beach. They have a huge Axia console. Uh, Star 94 in Atlanta, they're on the air with an Axia console. And K-Wave in Los Angeles is also uh, using Axia. There's Radio Sudtirol in Bolzano, Italy. They have two music stations and two news networks, all using Axia, plus a dozen reporter edit workstations. Pop FM in Corfu, Greece, a great little station using Axia. WZLX, that's a classic rock station in Boston. Big time operation there using Axia. Goom Radio in Paris, they do a ton of voice tracking with their Axia consoles. There's Sirius XM Radio in Toronto, Canada, and Hope 103.2 in Sydney, Australia. There's the Metropolitan Opera in New York. Radio Express in Bratislava, Slovakia. Good-looking studio there. Um, Family Radio in Taiwan, along with a couple of other Taiwanese broadcasters. On the left, there's Ad Labs Radio in Mumbai, India. Journal broadcast in Milwaukee with news and talk and sports broadcast. You know, if you're rich, and or if your parents are rich, and you want to be a disc jockey, well, where do you go? You go to the Studio École de France in Paris, where you'll learn radio on an Axia console. Minnesota Public Radio in St. Paul, Minnesota, has about 20 studios, beautifully equipped. United Stations Network in New York, well, they have an Axia console there for the Lou Dobbs show. On the right, that's uh, Energy in Paris, France, where they do a really uh, happening uh, dance show on the weekends with a 40-fader uh, console there. Leo Laporte, uh, he's a big fan. Leo runs a network now called twit.tv. You'll find him and all his uh, 24 hours worth of programming, talking tech uh, on the Internet. Uh, he uses an Axia console, though, because he's the guy running the board and the video switcher. He doesn't have time to, to use a complicated console. So even though the Axia console does a lot, uh, it doesn't take a lot to run the console. Let me get a little geeky here and show you a couple of drawings. Um, first of all, this is a drawing of a, a typical Axia studio using what we call our separates system. There's an Ethernet switch in the middle, and you can see lots of devices connect to that Ethernet switch. Things like a microphone node, there's, a, there's an analog node. These are kind of input-output devices. You connect headphones and microphones and uh, powered speakers and CD players to these devices. They're in, they get audio from the analog or AES digital realm into the IP audio realm. 
The Ethernet switch does all the heavy lifting here. It makes all the decisions. It does all the distribution. Uh, it sends packets where they're supposed to go and keeps them from going where they're not supposed to go. Uh, that is amazing technology for a low price in a modern-day Ethernet switch. Uh, an Axia Studio typically also will consist of an Axia Studio engine that does the actual mixing of audio and the Element uh, console that will tell the Studio engine what to do. You may notice other devices like, hey, that audio delivery PC in the lower right there, that's connected directly to the switch. It doesn't have a sound card in it. It's able to use our, our IP audio driver software to emulate a sound card and make the computer think it has a sound card when in fact it's got just an extra network interface card connected directly to the Ethernet switch. You talk about saving money, that really does. Um, also it preserves the audio, it stays totally digital all the way. Uh, there's an Axia AES EBU digital node for feeding things that require AES and there's an Axia router selector node typical for an installation. We have a new device called the Axia Power Station. You know, we decided that maybe we should put the uh, Ethernet switch into our console. Well, that's kind of a novel idea, but it makes hooking things up a lot simpler. Uh, so you can connect your mics and uh, headphones and control room monitors and CD player, all kinds of things, to the audio inputs and outputs on the back of the power station. But you can also connect Ethernet devices to the back of the power station, like a live wire enabled uh, talk show system, or a live wire enabled IP codec, or even to other studios. Yeah, one cable, one Ethernet cable connects all the facilities of one studio to all the facilities of another studio. How about that? It's pretty slick. And again, there's the element console talking to the power station, power station doing all the all the mixing there, and some other devices like, hey, how about an intercom system? Uh, Axia just Actually, intercoms is plug right into the uh, Ethernet switch and use the standard live wire protocol. Hey, here's a here's a word. Axia eliminates expensive, labor intensive, discrete cable runs because Axia components connect using standard Ethernet cable and a lot less cable. Just one cable connects studios, for example, and just one cable connects live wire enabled devices uh, to the rest of the Axia network. By the way, uh, our consoles, well, it's kind of a fashion show. <laughs> they're available in two different colors, uh, silver and, and, a, and a bronze and charcoal look. Uh, they're very configurable, too. You see those different uh, modules you can get? Yeah, there's thousands of different permutations of consoles, different sizes and uh, you know, different complements of faders and call controllers and production modules and buttons and uh, monitor modules. It's just a, a lot of different ways to do a console. In fact, if you look at, say, the, uh, the third picture from the left up at the top of the screen there, there's a split console. Uh, that's in Ireland where they wanted to have their automation controller right in the middle of the desk. So they split the audio console in two. Perfectly doable. Lots of folks do it. Now, you've been looking at the Element console. Well, here's a console called the IQ. It's smaller. It's uh, less expensive. And uh, you don't give up much. In fact, it's very full featured. Uh, it can be eight faders or 16 faders, up to 24 faders on the, uh, the IQ console. Uh, it has beautiful OLED LED displays. Uh, that's organic LED displays, so they're bright and pretty. Uh, very sharp, very pretty to look at uh, for the meters and for the clock and for the timer. Also, you might notice every um, fader has a little uh, OLED label there at the bottom that tells you what's on the fader and some things about what's going on with that fader. Uh, here's the options available as far as the expansion modules. You can get, uh, like I said, more faders. You can also get uh, uh, six faders with user keys or six faders with a telco controller. And there's that telco system on the right there, the IQ6 telco gateway. You plug some phone lines in. You plug the Ethernet cable into the back of the uh, IQ console. And voila, you have a talk show system. It's really that easy. There's a backup power supply available, and there's the IQ core on the left. That's the heart of the IQ console. All the inputs and outputs are right there on the back. Uh, plus, there's an Ethernet switch built in, so you can hook it up to other studios or to more inputs and outputs. Really convenient. It, just, just, it goes together so fast. Here's a typical diagram of how an IQ console will go together. A lot like that power station diagram you saw earlier, but uh, the IQ console is, uh, is a bit simpler, and uh, definitely it's, uh, it's budget-priced. Um, here's even more budget pricing. It's the Radius console. This is not expandable. It's eight faders. You can have any number you want as long as it's eight. Uh, it uses LED uh, displays for the metering and for the clock and the timer. Uh, but if you want to uh, be on even a smaller budget, there you go. Radius console, and it's com fully compatible with uh, the rest of the Axia Livewire network. If you want to talk amongst yourselves, well, 
Axia offers intercom systems. These are pretty cool. They plug right into the Axia LiveWire network and let you talk from studio to studio to desktop. There's some desktop units right there. You can even put a, an uh, intercom module into one of our element consoles and have uh, complete intercom connectivity there. Oh, there's a software version, too. So you can deploy that software across a whole uh, newsroom full of reporters, and they can talk to each other and talk to the, the control rooms and such. Hey, uh, Axie is not only about mixing, but it's also about routing. So here are some products that would help you route audio to exactly where you want it. Uh, beautiful things like that uh, 9 and 17 button smart switch panel. Those film cap uh, panels on the right, they're rack mount. And if you're used to uh, an XY router controller, well, look in the lower right there. There's three different ones, X1, X2, and XY router control panels. They're really effective and pretty cool. This is the IP audio driver. Hey, I won't get into, go into detail here, but that IP driver goes into your PC instead of an expensive sound card. And the PC thinks it's got sound cards, up to 24 of them. And the, uh, uh, the functionality is it connects right to the live wire network. So you can get perfect digital audio in and out of uh, any uh, computer, any PC, uh, any automation player or recorder uh, using the IP audio driver. Oh, by the way, there's versions for Mac and for Linux as well. This software is cool. It's called iProbe, and it documents your whole Axia system, no matter how big or small. Push one button, and bam, in a few seconds, the entire system is documented and stored right in that PC or laptop. And uh, you, can, you can push uh, any saved uh, configuration right back into anything you have to replace. So it makes it very convenient. Oh, look at this. Here's a software version of a console. Yep, you can uh, put this on a PC, run it, and have you an audio console right there. It runs, you know, an existing mix engine uh, or can remote control an existing console or standalone. There's a number of different devices that plug right into an Axia network. Let's look at a few of them. There's a phone system, the newest phone system from Telos, the Telos VX. Multi-studio, multi-line, all voice over IP, and it plugs right into Axia's Livewire. There's the Omni 8X. There's eight audio processors in one box. There's the Telos Zip 1. It's an IP codec that plugs right into LiveWire. Hey, there's the Omni 11. What a hoss. It's an incredible audio processor. It's got a LiveWire jack on the back of it. Hey, if it's in your studio, you want to hook it up that way? It's right there. And there's the Telos iPort. This is eight IP codecs in one box. You can use this to connect to distant studios and have terrific low latency two-way uh, back and forth with other places. A number of other manufacturers make hardware that connect right to the live wire network. Like our sister company, Linear Acoustic. Audio Science makes a sound card that actually doesn't put out any audio. It hooks up to our network and it does all the stretch and squeeze and stuff like that that you expect from a high-end audio card. 25.7 makes a profanity delay that has a live wire jack right on the back. No other wiring. Um, Nautel makes a transmitter, make a line of transmitters now that uh, that have a live wire jack uh, on the back of them. In fact, I, I even own one of them at one of my radio stations. International Data Casting makes a satellite receiver with a live wire jack right on the back. So for audio and GPIO, it's right there in one cable. All these audio delivery systems are live wire compatible as well. That means you can do all their functions over one cable that plugs right into the live wire network. Here's Ethan Torrey of Minnesota Public Radio. Ethan says, we saved a substantial amount of money using Axia. Comparing the bids we got, we saved a little over 30%. Tom Nelson, the engineering manager at Minnesota Public Radio, says you can hire a land vendor who doesn't need to understand radio to pull your infrastructure cabling. This makes the engineer's job a lot easier, says Tom. He can focus on his expertise, giving the board operators what they need to do their best. Hey, here's a fellow that works at uh, WOR in New York. When I rush in for my show, I push two buttons and bam, the console reconfigures exactly the way I want. Blake Thompson, the producer of the Dave Ramsey Show, says some days our show is very hectic. I'm timing into our fixed break while using the Elements Talkback bus to coordinate with uh, and join Fox News. I couldn't do this with our old console, and that is the absolute truth. Now, here's something dramatic I want you to look at. Here's a picture of a facility, not Axia. But this facility is all digital. It's what we call TDM routing. Nine engineers, three months to wire that wall of punch blocks. That's a lot of wire, a lot of personnel, a lot of maintenance over the coming years. Every time they make a change, they pretty well got to document it. This is the same, actually it's a bit more, it's the same amount of audio and GPIO control over live wire. 
There's three Ethernet switches there. And you can see they're not even all the way populated. I mean, there's room for a whole lot more. Huh. Pretty dramatic. Here's Jorge Garza, the market engineer for Univision in McAllen, Texas. I completely rewired our second Axia studio, tear out installation, and config in under four hours. Now we have seven Axia studios. Oh, what he didn't tell you? His first studio took him uh, almost a week. But after he figured it out, <laughs> four hours. Here's Perry Carter, the ops manager at Minnesota Public Radio. We haven't any problems, says Perry. It's been amazing. Mark Stennett with Univision says, Axia's live wire is the future for us and for other radio groups. Ethernet just makes sense. Well, I'd like to thank you for joining me for this presentation. I hope you followed through it okay. And if you have questions, I'm happy to answer them and happy to give you much more in-depth on anything that you'd like to know. There's a book written about IP audio, written by Steve Church and Skip Peasy. It's available from Focal Press, or if you contact us, we'll try to get you a copy. Thanks again for watching, and um, be sure you contact us with any questions. Bye-bye.